Hi guys, happy Saturday? I, it doesn't feel like Saturday at all. I don't know what it feels like. It feels like Sunday or Friday going on a Monday. It's weird. Alright, so back to um, old George Pickingill, which it's seriously, it gets even better and better and better. So, I'm really looking if anybody has any Euro. Well, yeah, yeah, it'd be European, but it, it, from like Cornish, I mean, folklore, uh, European folklore, I don't know from that area. I don't know how to describe it, but like books with the folklore of that type of regional area. Let me know below if you guys know of any like historical books, any. You know, um, with the, you know, all the history of, like, the, the witches besides the Children of Cain, which is obviously an amazing book. Um, I, yeah, I'd really like to know. <laughs> I'm trying to find folklore of, uh, like, Britain and all that area, so. Alright, now. Where did I go? I had it, I had it down. Oh, there we go. Alright, there we go. Okay, so, when I first visited, he says, um, Cainwin in 1977, and told the other, or, and told the older vicar about my interest in the local folklore, he sent me to see Lillian Garner, so she invited me in for tea, and we discussed the stories of witchcraft in the village and picking ill. So, it was, um, pretty obvious from our conversation that she knew nothing about modern Wicca and had, uh, never read any books or magazines about witchcraft. That's what I like. That's the stuff that's good. Alright, so she remembered the Cunning Men from her childhood as a village, uh, character and an eccentric whose photograph was taken next to the, uh, first ear... Oh, first car to come into Canewin. Wow. Alright. So she also re revealed that her mother talked about another... Talked about another secret site of Pickingill as the master of an old coven in the village when she... where she belonged. Huh. I don't remember writing any of this down. Alright, now Lillian also volunteered the information that her mother told her that the cunning man had many visitors who came to his cottage a long way away, seeking his um, great knowledge of the occult. So before, he says, before I left, she gave me a copy of Philip Denton's History of the Roch Rockford Hundred and the original of the photograph of George Pickingill that was reproduced in Eric Maple's book. All right, so maybe I need to find these books. So why she gave this to a stranger who came knocking on her door one autumn afternoon is a mystery. Now, a photograph of Granny Garden Garner uh, standing at the door of her home um, at Vicarage Cottage. Um, I don't know what I even wrote there. Something, uh, an article by Maple in the magazine, Part Work, Man, Myth, and Magic. Now, Eric Maple's version of the Canewin Witches and George Pickingill remain the accepted one for the 12 years after the publication of his book. Then in 1974, the John Score, the editor of the Wiccan, the official newsletter of the Pagan Front, uh, now the Pagan Federation, was in correspondence with a British-born man, E.W. Bill well, E.W. Now, Bill Liddell, who was living at the time in Auckland, New Zealand. But, are you from, um, Burns, Burns the Dragon TV. Are you from New Zealand? I don't know if you are or not. Now, he claimed he had relatives in southern England, uh, who ran hereditary craft covens. Not only that, but Liddell said that he was also a descendant of George Pickingill, and he had been inducted into the family tradition um, as a young man in Essex 20 years earlier. Okay. So John Score obtained permission to publish some of Bill Liddell's letters in the Wiccan, and they appeared as articles under the line of a well-wisher. So, in these articles, Little Liddell, Little Liddell, I think it's Liddell, uh, made some sensational and quite extraordinary claims about the old Pickingill and his old George Pickingill and his family. 
Now, among other revelations, the articles claim that while he was studying at Cambridge University in the late 1980s, Aleister Crowley had been a member of a picking mill coven, which is really interesting. In Norfolk, I would love to be a part of that coven. So um, he had allegedly been expelled because he would not um, convene regularly and complain that he did not want to be bussed around by a woman. That's typical of Crowley. Um, so she apparently regarded uh, Crowley as a vicious, sadistic monster. <laughs> this information had been passed to Liddell by three old ladies who were members of the Picking Hill craft tradition. I, I don't even know if there's books on this, but I, there, there should be. I mean, there's got to be some kind of folkloric book. That's what I'm looking for. So there's a, all, an, all, there is also an... Um, oh, God... Apocryphal story that while Crowley was studying at Cambridge, he had a, a wax image of a tutor he disliked. Okay, so this this reminds me of my very first spell I ever did, and well, one of the first that I did in junior high. So he and his coven had gone into the field and stuck a pin in one of the image's limbs, and a few days later, the man fell over and broke his leg. Crowley, in fact, told. Gerald Gardner, when they met, that he had been in a witch cult when he was younger. Now, according to Bill Adele's sources, Crowley drew heavily on the rituals of the Pickingill craft when he was compiling those for his own magical groups, the AA and the OTO, um, the Ordo Templi Ortianus, Ori Orientis. Um, yeah, basically what I did was I had just a pop it. Um, and I broke its neck, and the next day, um, literally, the guy was in a car crash, and he had flipped his Jeep, and he had really, like, I don't think he broke his neck, but he, he did something to it crazy. It was pretty bad. So. Now, Bill Liddell also claimed that his elders in the Pickingill craft had told him that George Pickingill had helped the Roscarucian Masonic writer and researcher, um, Hargraves Jennings to compile the occult knowledge um, that later formed the basis for the magical workings of the famous Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. So the articles also claim that the new forest coven that Gerald Gardner formed in 1939 was connected with a network of nine covens founded by Pickingill in the 19th century. So really interesting. I mean, it just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. It's like, wow, I need a timeline. I need to draw a timeline for myself. So it was also alleged that when Crowley and Gardner met in 1946, they exchanged notes on their common craft background. Now, in the biography of Gardner, published under the byline of Jack uh, Bracelin, but in fact, ghostwriting, I hate ghostwriting, <laughs> written by the Sufi master um, Indri's Said Shah. The great beast told him at their meeting uh, that he had been on the edge of witchcraft as a young man. Huh. Yeah, that's different. That's a really, really different gardener. I, I just don't care for gardener at all. I, I don't. So you guys know that though. So now Crowley also repeated um, the same story to his friend, the novelist Louis Wilkinson. So, he says, I had started my own witchcraft newsletter called The Cauldron in 1976, and a year later, almost co coinciding with my visit to Canewin and meeting with Granny Garner, uh, Bill Liddell wrote to me. He said that um, his elder had now instructed him to submit any further articles on the Picking Hill craft to The Cauldron from 1977 to the present date. Liddell had submitted a series of articles at first using the nom de la plume of Lug, and later under his own name. So this material has described the differences between the hereditary and traditional craft and Wicca, uh, the old craft's supposed connection with Druidism, Scandinavian, and Germanic pa paganism, medieval French witchcraft and Freemasonry, and the influence of Arabic beliefs on the witch cult. That is really interesting. That is really interesting. We're going to stop there for today. I love this. So, let's see.
Let me write this down so I don't forget it. If I can find where I went. not right today. There. So yeah. It's interesting. It's even more interesting too. But if, you know, Gardner, Joe Gardner, you know, invented Wicca, so what came, what was he doing before? Was he following the pick and go craft? Was he doing, you know, what was he doing? I want to know that. Was he making, you know, was he in traditional craft? Was he trying to, you know, set up Wicca? I mean, I just, I, I don't get, I mean, I know how Wicca came about, but I don't get what Gardner has to do with, you know. I, I know he, you know, was a major figure for a lot of people. Not for me, but for a lot of people, so. It's just different. That's very different to me. I can't really understand where Gardner comes in and what his relevance to traditional witchcraft is, so I don't know, but it just gets more interesting and more interesting, and then it goes into actually, you know, Lucifer, the light bearer, and uh, the story, it goes into the, you know, the Bible, and uh, the Cain, and all of it, and Tubal Cain, the grandson of Cain, and it's just amazing, so, but alright guys, it feels so weird today, did you guys have a good Thanksgiving? I hope you guys did, so, um, I will see you all tomorrow. I hope you guys have a great day. I love you guys. Um, thank you for all the comments. You guys are amazing. But yeah, if you guys know of any folkloric books on, um, like, Europe, you, you, you caned one, or, you know, Essex, that area, um, you know, even Cornish folklore, all of that, let me know below. Make sure you click that subscribe button, and make sure you click the bell so you know when I go live. Alright, guys, I love you all, all the way from... Venus, of course. All the way back now. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Everybody have a good day. And thank you guys for the prayers and all the support for Chico. He is doing so good. I am just so happy. and It is a blessing. So it's a relief. I can breathe. <laughs> so, I love you guys. And thank you guys so much for your compassion and love. And yeah, all my love.